Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we will be talking about chromatin immunoprecipitation. Right? Chromatin immunoprecipitation is a slight modification of basic immunoprecipitation technique where we know the basic immunoprecipitation, the idea is to use antibody against a specific region of a protein and to drag that protein, precipitate that protein down using an insoluble bead because we add our antibody that antibody remember our antibody is attached to a bead it's attached to the bead which is insoluble and that antibody is specific against a protein determinant this is the protein so once we add this antibody it will bind to the specific region of the protein using FAB portion uh, and it will drag that protein down because there will be an antigen antibody interaction thing and then this due to the bead it will precipitate itself down so by this way we can fish out different proteins from a mixture of other proteins. Now in chromatin immunoprecipitation, that is what we are talking about, chromatin immunoprecipitation or it is simply known as CHIP, right. chromatin immunoprecipitation. Now in this case, this process again, it uses the idea of antigen antibody interaction, idea that the antibody can interact with a specific region of the protein. But in this case, we use this process to find out the DNA binding region for different proteins. Now, different proteins like histones, proteins like different polymerase and other enzymes which will interact with the DNA. There are many enzymes and many proteins required to interact with the DNA for different physiological functions. So here, the idea is that, let us say we have the DNA and there is a specific region where a protein binds let us say this is the protein, it binds only to this section but not the other section of the DNA and there is another protein, it binds somewhere else in the DNA. This is the two proteins, so one and two binds to different regions of the DNA, that means bind different two regions of the chromatin, same things here in this case because DNA is present in the chromatin. So now once we have this, now we want to know where exactly the protein 1 binds where exactly the protein 2 binds, I mean the which is sequence, what sequence uh, is present in this location and this region. So we want to know the sequence where exactly protein 1 and 2 binds. To understand that protein DNA interaction, we need to find it out by using and adding antibodies there. Now how? This idea starts with very basic thing and simple thing that we have the cell, we have the cell and we have the nucleus inside the cell. So we we take, uh, we, we first allow this process, whatever process, let us say this process works during the replication. So we allow that cell to in, enter into the DNA replication and after entering into the DNA replication, the desired time comes in and then we add what is called a cross-linking agent. We add a cross-linking agent, cross-linking agent like formaldehyde, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a cross-linking agent that we add here because here formaldehyde will help these proteins to directly interact tightly to the region of the DNA. It will help them to tightly and compactly bind to the DNA. Okay. So once formaldehyde is provided and this protein is compactly bound to the DNA, the region of the DNA, that is called the cross-linking. Now the second part, once the cross-linking is done, then you break this cell open and the nuclear envelope open and you take all this chromatin bound protein the sequence to be out. Now after that the protein sequence is out. So let me and we just simply broke the cell open using sonication here. So we have the protein regions bound here and here right. So we have that chromatin with the protein. Now chromatin means obviously DNA and protein is called chromatin right so dna bound with the proteins of our desire so once we have that now the second this is the second stage that is the uh, hydrolysis i mean the breakdown of the cell membrane to take things out now the third stage is the lysis of the dna itself so we treat it with a specific uh, endonuclease enzymes dpn1 this is the enzyme that we treat usually and it will break them down from different regions let's say it break them down in four different uh, parts like this fragment 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4 different fragments after the result of DPN. So this is the third stage of the process. So once the lysis of the DNA fragment is done, then what we do, then we add 
our antigen antibody then we add our antibody with beads then we add the antibody with beads here specific against this protein 2 and so because we want to know where exactly this protein 2 is interacting with the DNA in the chromatin so we add the specific antibody against protein 2 so what will happen after this if I draw it correctly in this case four fragments among those fragments this is the second one this is the third one with red so we know that this antibody with beads will bind to this protein only right and as a result of this beads are present this antibody will drag this DNA bound with protein fragment down by precipitation. So, it will precipitate that chromatin. Remember, because DNA with proteins called chromatin precipitated with antibodies specifically against that protein which is bound to the DNA. So, it is a chromatin immunoprecipitation or chip. So, now we get that fragment. We exclude everything else, we take it, then we load it in the gel or we separate sometimes, uh, we separate the proteins from the DNA there by using a salt concentration higher that protein will come up from the DNA. Now, we take that DNA, we sequence that DNA to understand which is the region exactly for that protein to bind. Suppose in this case we know uh, that protein, we know which protein we are looking for, right. So, now we know the exact region of the DNA where exactly that X protein binds. In this case, this is the protein 1, so we know exactly where the one number protein binds, right. See, this is the process chromatin immunoprecipitation which is extremely helpful to understand the DNA binding region or proteins. It can also be used for RNA but it is li little difficult and uh, way works in different way. But that is kind of it guys. I hope that is helpful. Thank you.